For the longest time, FreeCAD could not do multi-part assemblies. You'd have to rely on third-party workbenches to do something relatively simple like this scissor lift demo. However, OnCell is trying to change that. OnCell is a for-profit company that is building versions and other tools for FreeCAD targeted at enterprise users. However, they are contributing code back to the main versions of FreeCAD, which includes the new assembly workbench in version 0.22 and version 1.0. This is similar to what Canonical does with Ubuntu Pro, and they contribute back to the Linux kernel and the Debian distribution. Even though this assembly workbench is new and lacks a few advanced features, I find it relatively easy to use to test out designs. As a result, I'll show you how to use it in this episode, as creating assemblies is an important part of any CAD experience. <music> Up until now, we've focused on creating single contiguous bodies, even if we showed how multiple bodies might be created, like our box and lid. However, we did not dive into testing how those bodies worked together as a single assembly. This becomes very important as your mechanical designs increase in complexity and number of moving parts. Let's put together a simple assembly to demonstrate how to use this new workbench. The assembly workbench should come pre-installed with FreeCAD version 0.22 and later, which also includes version 1.0, release candidate 1, and hopefully later as well. To start using it, we need to create some parts. So let's create a new document under there. Make sure you're in part design workbench. Let's create a new body and create a new sketch. We're going to do this on the XY plane. We're going to create our base arm. So use this essentially an oval tool. We're going to attach it here. Adjust the width to some arbitrary value. Right click to end the tool. Use the S key to make it symmetrical around the origin. Right click, notice we have some redundant constraints. It's probably this horizontal constraint. We don't need that and we probably don't need it attached to these points. There we go. So that fixed it there. Let's set the length here. So D for distance. We're going to set this point and this point. These are going to be 100 millimeters away from each other. Let's set the width, which is this point, to this point down here. We're going to set this to 7.5 millimeters. Right click to end that tool. Now this should be fully constrained, but we want to draw that inside slot. So let's go from here to somewhere in there. We'll adjust it about like that. Right click to end that tool. D for distance, we're going to set the width of this inner slot to be 3.5 millimeters. We're going to draw a circle over here, so right click, select your circle tool. This is going to be where the peg goes. So just set that, then use the D key for the distance tool. Let's do 3.5 millimeters. And we're going to set the distance between this slot and this hole that we've created, and we're going to make that 8 millimeters. Right click to end, and we have our first beam. This should be fully constrained. So click close, let's pad this three millimeters. We have our first base that is done. Let's right click to rename this. We're gonna call this the base of our scissor lift. Collapse that, let's create a new body. We'll go ahead and rename this arm underscore one. Let's click on base. We'll bring in that one as a subshape binder so we can use some reference materials on it. Create a new sketch, make sure that arm one is our active body. Let's draw on the XY plane again, and let's bring in some external geometry from our subshape binder. And I can't click on it now, right click. That probably means the original base is active, so hide that one. Now I can see that subshape binder. So click on the external geometry, let's bring in that, and let's bring in that as well as this hole. Right click to end that tool. Let's hide our subshape binder. And if we are going to make these bodies separate pieces of the assembly, we're going to move them around with the transform tool. When we do that, these external geometry pieces go with it. Remember, these are attached via subshape binder to the original part. And so if we attach pieces to like points here to try to draw a line exactly, you're going to end up breaking your original design. Right click to end that tool. Do not attach anything to these parts. I I'm only going to use these parts as a reference. So I just want the length of this and this dimension and how big this hole is. So it's all based on that original base arm. So I'm going to draw my slot. I'm just going to draw it out here first, some length like that. Let's use the S key. We're going to make it symmetrical around the origin. 
right click and it looks like I messed this one up. All right, control Z to end that one. Let's do this, this and origin. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. To set the length to be the same, we'll use the E for equals. We'll set this length to be equal to that length. And we're gonna set this arc to be the same length as that one. So now it is the same length and width as the original base, but it is not attached to any of the points on the original base. That's very important for when we go to do our assembly later. I'm going to create a hole over here for a peg, right click, and I'm gonna make it the same size as this hole, right click. I need one more hole for the center pin, so let's put that at the origin, like that. Let's use E and set this one equal to that one. Right click, we are fully constrained, so close out of that. And we are going to pad this three millimeters like we did before. Let's bring in this base, and we're gonna right click on arm, we're gonna select transform, and we're just gonna move this body out of the way so we can see what we're creating. Click OK. If we tried to move this and that subshape binder, we had attached our sketch to that subshape binder, that's gonna be a problem. That's why we did not attach the sketch. We just use it for reference dimensions. Instead of doing that again, since we need another arm, let's just click on this arm. Let's click this orange clone sheep that creates a new body. We're gonna right click, say rename, and we're gonna rename it to arm underscore two. Assuming I can actually type, there we go. Right click on that, say transform, and let's move that one away. Click OK. Now we have the basic components of our scissor lift. We need to create three pins to hold these together. We're going to make them the same shape. They're just going to be proxies for, say, something like screws. So we're going to create a new body. We're going to right click. We're going to rename that to pin underscore one. We're going to sketch on the XY plane. Let's hide our arms and base. Let's create a circle like so, right click, D for dimension. Let's make that three millimeters. That's essentially the size of those holes we created. Remember, we're just approximating screws here. Right click to end, click close. We're gonna pad this, let's say nine millimeters. Click okay. Let's bring these parts back in so we can see what we're looking at. Right click on our pin, say transform. Let's move this over here. Click OK, collapse that, let's clone that, right click, we're going to say rename to pin 2. We're going to transform that one, we're going to move that one out a little bit, click OK, click on pin, sure, pin 1 again, clone that, let's go to rename, we're going to say pin 3, and right click and transform, and let's move that over here, click OK. We now have all of the parts of our assembly ready to go so we can start constructing things. Go and switch to the assembly workbench, which should be in this drop down here. We're gonna create a new assembly. This is a container for all of our parts and joints that we want to work with and make them fit together. Similar to how a body is a container for a single contiguous part, an assembly is a container for all of the parts and joints that we are going to define. Now we want to move the parts into the assembly because right now they're not part of the assembly so we can't do much with them. So I can drag them down like so. I believe I can actually shift click, highlight them all and drag them down. So now all of the parts are in assembly. From here, I should be able to move the parts around freely without having to use transform. Notice that assembly is highlighted in yellow. If I double click to stop editing, I can no longer move the parts around. So if for some reason you come in here and you drag them, you're like, why can't I move these parts around? Because I have been bitten by this a bunch of times. Double click on assembly to make sure you are editing it. It should be highlighted in yellow. Now you can move the parts around. This took me a while to figure out. To start creating assembly, one of these joints must be grounded. And that is essentially locking it into place so that everything else can move relative to that one. So you notice we can't create joints until we've set our grounded joint or grounded part. I actually want the scissor lift to go up in the air in the z-axis because that's how it works in my brain. So I'm going to start with the base and I'm going to transform it like so. I think that's right. Let's go to right. Yes, that is facing up. And with that, I'm going to click on base and then I'm going to click on my toggle grounded. 
So click away, and now I can't move that part. I can still move my other parts, but this is locked into place relative to everything else. Next, we are going to attach one of these pins to the hole in here, and we're going to do that using this revolute joint, which is this one, where it locks into place but allows it to rotate around an area. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on the outside face of my pin, so I can come in here. You see it's highlighted in yellow here, and it's going to allow it to revolve around this. Notice I can actually select where these local axes begin, or the origin point, so it can be at the top, it can be at the middle, or at the bottom. So I'm going to try the top axis here, but selecting this outside face here. And then I'm going to come to the inside face of this hole here, and notice where I move my mouse, that affects where that axis lines up. So I'm going to select this outside one, if I can get it, so there's the outside most and it looks like it lined up that way so if that happens i believe we can just click this button here and it reverses it so now that pin is flush with the face here so once we are happy with this joint click ok and now we can rotate this pin within this hole but it won't move in and out that's what the revolute joint does. It prevents the pin from moving in and out, but we can rotate it. If you want to be able to move it in and out, which we'll show in a minute, we want the cylindrical joint. Notice that I'm going to collapse these parts under the joints folder. If I drop this down, I can see joints. They are kind of like parts here. I can actually delete them, which is right here. And you can click on them to modify properties. You can double click on them to get the task pane up again to modify any of the other properties. So I'm going to click cancel, so we're going to go back to where we were, and let's continue building our scissor lift. I'm going to show you that cylindrical joint. So let's click on that, and then it's going to ask us to define our two points that we want to use. I want to use the outside face again, so I'm going to attach this arm to this pin, and I want to use this outside face. So let's do right there where that local axis stops in the middle. Click on that, and then let's move our camera so that we're looking at the inside face of this point in this arm. Notice I can also select edges in addition to faces. Sometimes you want to do that. So I want to find where that middle one is, which I think is there. Let's zoom out, and it should attach so that it lines up with the pin here. That is perfect. That is exactly like I intended it. So click OK. And now we can move this arm around, but I didn't use a revolute joint, so I can also move this arm in and out. This is more or less a demonstration. If you find yourself in this situation and you couldn't use a revolute joint, let's make these two faces, so this inside face and this inside face, match up. So we basically construct a revolute joint. We're going to use the distance joint, so click on that. We're going to click on this face, and we're going to click on this face of the base. And you can set a distance, so you can actually define a distance. Notice they're clipping through each other here. So you can set a distance between those two faces, points, edges, what have you. Let's set it to zero so that they're essentially touching each other, and say OK. And let me rotate my camera back to something reasonable here so you can see what I'm doing. And now I can just move this arm around, which is perfect. So we don't have to do that again. Let's use the revolute joint. We're going to do the outside edge of this hole of this arm. So let's find that. In fact, instead of doing this face, I'm going to show you this edge. We should have the same property of doing this edge of the face, but I'm going to click this edge here. And we're going to line it up with the middle of this pin. So see where that local origin goes, and we're going to do it in the middle. So we click that, and those should line up right in the middle there. We are happy with this. We don't need to set any sort of offset or reverse it, so click OK. And we're going to repeat this process. We're going to do a revolute joint. We're going to do the middle of that pin, and we're going to do the outer edge of this arm. So now those should line up. That looks pretty good, so click OK, and we should be able to rotate this around, and we can bring this up, and you notice this arm comes with it. So I'm moving this outside arm, and I'm moving this inside arm. The last thing we need to do is connect these up, and actually, you see, I made a mistake here. This is now going to clip through that, 
we actually want this arm on the outside of that one. So this is not a bad error because it means we can go and adjust our joints. In fact, I'm going to delete them. So let's get rid of that revolute. Let's get rid of that revolute. Let's move our parts out of the way a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to repeat this process. So revolute joint. Let's do the middle. Instead of this inner edge, I actually want this outer edge. Perfect. Click OK. Let's do revolute joint. Let's do this outer edge of this arm there. And we're going to do the middle point of the face of this pin. All right. Click OK. Ah, much better. So now I can do the scissor joint and nothing is actually clipping. Let's do one more revolute joint. We're going to do it on the outer edge of this pin. And we're going to connect it to the outer edge of this outer arm here, like so. So you can see edges or faces work for something like this. And now that pin is inside this slot. Click OK. But it has no concept of physics because it just clips through everything. So we want to be able to have it be inside of that slot and slide along it. This actually ends up being very tricky with a pin like this. One way to do this is we can set a distance between this pin face and the inside edge of this slot. So let's try that. I'm going to do distance. I'm going to set this face to be some distance away from this face. And it's going to start off as zero. We know that there's a 0.5 millimeter gap. So let's try 0.25. That should put it right in the middle. So click OK. And now we should be able to operate this scissor lift more or less, and that pin stays in there, in that slot. It sort of stays, right? We can still clip through stuff, but you get the idea of it working. In fact, you can clip through this area right here. But it is good enough to demonstrate some sort of functionality with the scissor lift. I'm going to save this and name it scissor lift. So that is the basics here. What I want you to do is to delete this last distance joint so that that pin just freely floats, and I'm going to introduce you to your challenge. Your challenge is to modify the assembly in the previous section so that the pin actually stops at the appropriate places in the base. FreeCAD isn't a physics engine, so it has no concept of collisions. You'll probably want to use a slider joint and define minimum and maximum limits for how far the part should move. With this version of FreeCAD, the slider joint does not work with cylindrical objects in a slot. As a result, you might need to create one or more temporary bodies that hold the pin and can work with the slider joint. I changed the appearance of these bodies to be transparent. If you were to 3D print or manufacture this assembly, you would just leave out those temporary parts. I've even left out the pins as I plan to use in three bolts. With everything connected together, the lift works just like we expected from the simulation. You don't necessarily need to create full assembly simulations for simple designs, but they can be incredibly helpful for complex machines with lots of moving parts. If you solve the challenge, please share a screenshot or video of it working on X, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Mention DigiKey and tag your post with hashtag DKFreeCAD. In the next video, I want to demonstrate how you can use finite element analysis to simulate stress, heat, and vibration in your designs.